In a beloved S-shaped strip of land, Vietnam is a multi-ethnic country with 54 distinct ethnic groups living and fighting together for national construction and defense for thousands of years. In this historical process, culture has generated an invisible power for the country. The combination of 54 ethnic groups has created Vietnamese culture as a colorful, bright, but simple and close picture. Each group represents a unique color gamut, contributing to the flawless picture. When visiting Vietnam Museum of Ethnology and the windy capital of the ancient northernmost Vietnam base, people can feel great happiness as if they were going along the length of the country. Being different from the two deltas in the two ends of the country, which are consolidated by a main river associated with affluence, the central coast region's terrain is separated by the imposing Trung Son mountain ranges, long sand dunes, and vast archipelago. The climate there is somewhat harsh and the residents have to confront sandstorms, louse wind, and floods all year. This is, perhaps, the reason why the people are also impassioned and stand firm in the face of any difficulties in their life. Therefore, the image of cactus, rows of casuarina trees and arid sand dunes have symbolized the strong vitality of the central coast. In the poem, How Pitied Central Vietnam Is, of Quang Luc, he wrote, The central sunshine is scorching, with low wind, hot sand mixing with alkaline soil, War and firebomb there are interminable. This land now is suffering from natural disaster again. It's humanly possible to sweet blood, improve impoverished soil to get fruit. The central coast is one of the six cultural regions belonging to the outside display area of Vietnam Museum of Ethnology. It spreads out from Havan Mountain Pass to Binh Thuan Province. In this miniature space, it is shown in the area of four meters square, including four highlighted projects presenting the cultural life of ethnic groups in the region. Phuc Long Grai Tower, Whale Temple, Sham Pottery Shop, statues of Sham ladies carrying water, the landscape around the building, Casarinus Rose, Cactus and other plants. Cactus is a plant with strong vitality, so it could stand the harsh climate of the central coast, such as the blazing sun and strong winds. Thus, this vegetation is often planted around Sham Tower and has become the symbol of the eternity, shows the vitality and energy of the residents. Each person is similar to a plant. On date of birth, but once, you are a velvety rose pervading. I am look like a stunted cactus, don't hastily blame for anybody when looking at the plant. Although, don't want me to become another. Cactus is only born from sandy region. Hot wind flying sand only bear cactus. The story records that once upon a time, human beings don't know the old age. They keep on living and die in silence. When dying, each person changes into a plant and all girls become century-old trees. That time, there were plenty of vegetation, except for cactus. In a village, there was an orphan girl living alone. Although she is very beautiful, but she's dumb from birth. After that, she got married with a carpenter but then he died and left her a son. This boy grew up and became depraved. He got drunk all day and made his mum so upset that she died and changed into a strange and scrubby plant called cactus. After his mum's death, the son was sunk in grief. 
he wandered everywhere. Eventually, he died and turned into purposeless flying sands. Wind unintentionally gathers sands and creates down sand somewhere. Since then, cactus only grows verdantly and bloom on white wild sand dune. Like cactus, Casarinus can stand the arid climate in the central coast. Rows of Casarinus help us prevent soil erosion and sandstorm. With famous landmarks such as Go Sang, Bao Truk, Sham's pottery industry has met the needs of building architectural towers and served the self-sufficient life. The technique of making pottery is entirely by manual methods. With banquet and banking one, craftsmen, instead of using turntables, go backwards around a ceramic pedestal to form products. This is the restored model of Sham people's pottery shop at the Bautruk village, Phuc Dan town, Ning Phuoc District and Ning Tuan Province. Being an age-old region, the cradle of prosperous Sham Kingdom, Sham community has a long-standing development history with characteristics imbuing the ethnic cultural identity. Especially, there are plenty of traditional handicraft industries, such as weaving, shipbuilding, knitting, and a must-mention one is pottery. Bautruk Pottery Village, called Palai Hamuk in Sham language, is one of the most ancient one in Vietnam. According to the legend, the forefather Pak Long Chang taught women in the village how to make pottery. To commemorate this, the residents here built a temple and made offering to the forefather Pak Long Chang in every Kate festival. Apart from cultivating and breeding, pottery industry is regarded as the key trade of production. In Bao village, all Shan females know how to make pottery products. Girls at the age of 12 to 15 start to learn about the pottery making industry and when they get married they are all able to make a variety of ceramics like earthenware pot or water jars. Perhaps red hot colour of ceramic is soaked in the blood of the local people. Ning Tuan province has dozens of sham villages but only female hands and bow truck villages clay are capable of making pottery. The crafts send their own emotion and spirit in each patterned line. Thus, the product of each handicraft has a distinct voice that cannot be mixed. Making pottery is very meticulous. After being taken from the fields, clay is treshed into small one and then kept overnight with a moderate amount of water. In the next morning, the mixture of clay and smooth sand is well needed. Instead of using turntables like elsewhere, sham women make pottery by hands entirely. After shaping, the product is exposed to the sun during four to six hours and then polished by a piece of glazed terracotta. In open cast furnace, pottery products are kept with straw and burnt by wood on spacious lands in the village. Ceramic products have red hot color of well burnt clay. They are selected carefully by elder people in the village to find out the ones meeting the quality standards. Bautruk pottery souvenirs in the form of god statues will help a traditional handicraft village of Sham community in Vietnam have great breakthroughs. Worshipping whale is a popular and typical cultural characteristic of fishermen in the central coast. Most of the fishing villages have tomb or temples to worship the whale with solemn sacrificial rites. 
This custom has profound human values, expressing the hope of having a peaceful life whenever facing with nature and ocean. Every year, residents of the Central Coast region often organise many festivals, conduct traditional worship rites in Whale Temple like fishing net worship, folk singing, striking, whale funeral, and especially the fish begging festival with solemn rites and unique folk activities like Ba Chio or Ba Choi singing. Ba Chow singing is also called Ba Chow traditional operetta, holy passing chanty. It is a ceremonial folk singing of residents living near the coast from Quang Bing to Bing Tuan. Ba Chow singing means singings associated with dancing. Ba means hold tightly, Chow means an or. This type of folk art is held annually on the occasion of whale offering festival, whale funeral or fish begging festival. Attending these traditional events Visitors also have opportunities to join in folk games like grain basket shaking, boat racing and ba choy playing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the model of Poklong Girai Tower that is restored with the ratio of one third, based on the original version of Poklai Giro Tower in Panrang City. It's also called Sham Tower, a typical work of art. Visiting this landmark, we can experience the life in the central region with lots of mysterious things. Poklong Grai Tower is the common name of the most imposing cluster of sham towers left in Vietnam. Poklong Grai Tower is an overall structure including a main tower, 20.5 meters high, a fire tower, 9.3 meters high, and a gate tower, 8.5 meters high. This work reaches the highest levels in terms of architecture, art, sculpture and is regarded as the brightest center of Sham civilization. Chi Man King instructed to build this work from the end of the 13th century to the beginning of the 14th century. This is the worshipping place of Pak Lang Grai King 1151 to 1205 who has great contribution especially in irrigation to Sham community in the southern newly reclaimed region. Moreover under Pak Lang Grai King's dynasty Sham country was very wealthy and prosperous. Each side, each floor of each tower is all decorated with stone and ceramic motifs with a full range of shapes from people, dragon tails and leaf to magic bow. Poklong Grai Tower is situated on Trao Hill, Do Ving Ward. It's about nine kilometers in the northwest from the center of Fang Rang. It was built during the duration from the late 13th century to the early 14th century in the reign of King Chihava Mam. To worship King Po Klong Rai 1151 to 1205, 
who has great contribution to rule the country. Coming here, apart from contemplating Man Tai Toon, to serve visitors, the museum also regularly organises fan dance, pouring water dance, Kate Festival with Sham Tower opening gate ceremony, Ra Ra Nai trumpet concert. Every year, people living in the central coast usually held festivals in temples to pray for good health and abundant crops. In traditional religious ceremonies, sham girls often carry water to the tower to purify Niga and Yoni, two symbols of Siva God, the supreme being sham people venerate. They also all worshipping objects in the tower before conducting ceremonial rites. <laughs> 